Hello, and welcome to the Ride the Waiver Wire show. It's uh, Adam here with Andy and Big Tone, ready to talk to you guys about some uh, fantasy uh, football, high school style. So uh, let's just tear this band-aid off and get right into it. So uh, first week, or first game we're going to talk about is going to be matchup of the week, or uh, the marquee matchup, I should say. That's going to be Dying for Dubs, oh. a.k.a. Clay versus Flea Lee, uh, Mr. Uh, T-Bag, Trevor Medley himself. Uh, so with this one, it was a uh, it was a pretty uh, pretty close matchup there. Uh, you know, it was only a twenty point uh, about a twenty point deficit. It was a uh, one forty five to uh, one twenty nine. So rather close. Uh, second game, uh, we're gonna go. Uh, it's gonna be you two actually played each other this week. K nine unit versus uh, oh. Terrapin Station. Uh, so had a little bit of a down week here for. Uh, Old tone, a uh, little down week there for, or not down week, up week there for uh, for Andy. So he's the high scoring player this week, two eighty eight point nine. Uh, he was just one per, he was one person away from a perfect lineup. Uh, but yeah, so uh, we'll just go ahead and let you guys, uh, you know, kind of talk a little bit. We can let you guys get a little bit of trash talk in there if you want. You know, uh, you got anything? Well, I, I mean, mean, there's not much I to talk out. about when you've got a dominant force like Andy over there. He's obviously a fantasy guru. He's played us all. You know, he's trying to act like, oh, you know, I know as much as you guys. I think you've got some inside sources you might not be sharing or something. But if I'll take an L, I'll, I'll take one to Andy. Now listen, I told y'all after week one, and Bryce, I trust, okay? He has came back and been so strong, Okay. 36 points last week, absolute dog. Dreitler, 206 and five tuds? I mean, come on now. Clay tried to tell I me. Mean, he I tried to tell me. He was like, that. I think I won that trade. I think I won that trade. I was like, no, you didn't. No, you didn't, dude. Yep. You lost so bad. It's not even. You, know, you lost so bad, man. It really changes uh, a lot of things, too, if you kind of. You know, if Torelli Ward actually gets a couple more touchdowns, maybe gets two of those five tuddies. And they go from you to me. Maybe that might have helped my cause a little bit. But, you know, when he's over there I mean, stealing all of them, there wasn't much to go around. Braylon yeah, getting 47 a, is also helpful. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's always uh, it's always, it's always uh, scary anytime somebody drops 55 on you. So he was the, the, the leading scorer yeah. this week. Uh, so also, uh, sh- shout out Andy having the highest scoring bench player. His only bench player to score was uh, 42.5 with uh, – I want to say it's Julian uh, Julian Baker from Miami Trace is a uh, kind of a little mishap there, but still didn't need it. Listen, uh, I so was the- I, in that. I was really gunning for for Asher LeBeau or uh, Garrett Guess there from uh, Miami Trace, and you and Clay kind of stole stole my picks there. But I'm super happy about Julian Baker. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie. He's the absolutely- reason why I went with uh, went with Asher LeBeau. Uh, is uh, there's a there's a TV show on uh, Stars. I want to say it's a uh, it's got a guy named Asher in it. Pretty 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 op in the story. So I was like, hey, this, I got I got to rock with my gut. Something's telling me Asher is going to be a problem. And uh, I mean, he was. So uh, going going speaking of him, I actually started him this week. He uh, he had 36 points himself, but uh, helped me get a 183 117 win over Coach Carl here. Uh, say. Uh, not gonna lie, uh, I was before we did the stats. I was a little nervous just because I thought, uh, you know, I saw, I saw, uh, I want to say it's uh, Harshall, the running back from Hillsboro. There, I saw his stats. Uh, I saw uh, a little bit of Python stats. I know that was a high scoring affair there. I was just kind of a little nervous going into it, but then uh, you know, I kind of forgot. I had New, New, Newton Hoops as a quarterback in Benton County as a as a defense, and then alone got me uh, seventy five points there. So. Yeah, that's a dangerous uh, lineup. Was, yeah, I say uh, second highest scoring, uh, second highest scoring uh, team there, uh, but got outscored by 180 uh, or uh, 105 points there. So I don't know. Uh, it seems like Andy's championship to win here. I so said the only team that actually beat him was my opponent this week, Coach Carl. She, uh, yeah, I should say she, because it's being ran by Savannah now. Much better. Uh, much better. Uh, coach than it was previously being ran by but uh yeah i think she's got a solid team uh she, 
she just uh, hasn't been setting her lineup really a whole lot. I say uh, she really just started this past week, so uh, I look I look for her to get Drake Stapleton in the mix there at the super flex because he's just he's been a fantasy machine here recently. Uh, and then uh, Nolan Johnson, the first week he's been out of her starting lineup, he drops. 26, I think he had like 100, 140 yards, two touchdowns, kind of goes off there. Uh, but uh, switching gears here, we're going to go right into the top fives. We got top five quarterbacks. Uh, you just saw top five, or number one being Newt Hoops, 50 points. Uh, you also saw number two, same team, Gavin Kaufman, uh, 42.4. Uh, we have, I want to say Joey Pfeiffer from Southeastern, right? Andy, he's on your team? Yeah. Yeah, he's a. Yeah. Absolute dog. Yeah, oh, 100%. percent i will say, uh, I'd, be, I'd be getting the, the Southeastern stats. I'd say, uh, I'd, I'd be seeing them. I'd say, uh, always surprised. No, I guess I, should, I shouldn't say always surprised by now. I was going to say the first few weeks I was surprised, but now it's like, you know, uh, you should be up there. And then we got uh, Vinton County's very own Parker, I want to say Parker Shoreborn, if I'm mispronouncing that wrong, tell me on October 6th, had 40.2, uh, real close there for a, a fourth place. And then we got Bryce Wickline, like like Andy said, Bryce we trust, 36.4. I'm wanting to say his name has been in this top every single week. Every single week. He, he's too good of a player to be left off. So you got any thoughts here on uh, this top five, uh, Tony? Uh, yeah, it seems like it's been shifting around just a little bit here recently, too. I mean, obviously, Newt's always good, but he actually hasn't been leading every single week. We've got, a uh, what looks like some interesting names. Obviously, the Southeastern quarterback, usually he's been solid, but I haven't seen him really in the top five as much. Great guy, though. I think he's, hit a, him. He's, he's hit a couple honorable mentions, like you said. Same, I want to say same with Parker. He's hit a couple honorable mentions. I don't know if he's squeaked his way into the top five yet. But it's what we like to see, you know what I mean? Honestly speaking, I, I'm glad it's not just the same people and over and over again. And the people that we do see, they're deserved to be there. I mean, Bryce and Newt, two, two great kids, great quarterbacks, and I expect nothing less. Yeah. Uh, so this yeah. is uh, – honestly, we usually – go ahead, Andy. Oh, I was just going to say, I'm kind of surprised, you know, uh, Gillian from Piketon, he's been tearing it up. I was ex- kind of expecting him to be somewhere in there. It seems like he's been hovering around always the top five. This whole year. I want to say, I want to say this is one of his first weeks where he's kind of, uh, uh, you know, bounced out of the top five uh, in a week. Uh, but he did play a tough Zane Trace defense. Uh, they had, I believe, they had there was uh, three turnovers. So, uh, you know, I think that might have kept him uh, out of it a little bit. But um, yeah, no. So uh, that's a uh, top five quarterbacks there. Going, uh, going to the next one, we got top five running backs. Uh, so uh, we got. Basically, a couple people from Andy's team and then uh, one from everybody else's. So we got a uh, top two being Andy's, uh, <clears throat> Nate being top rusher, 50, or top player being 55.1, Braylon being uh, 47.7, Blake Phillips being 43.8. And I wanted to put an asterisk by him because he was taking a lot of snaps because uh, Carter Langley's been battling the injury out there. Uh, then we got, I uh, talked about him earlier, Asher LeBeau, uh, 36.4. And then we got... Uh, Austin uh, Barrett, 31.6. Uh, shout out me and Tony for actually starting the guys that we drafted this past week, not leaving them on our bench, Hell right? yeah. <laughs> we got to let them shine, bro. They got called up. They knew, the, they knew the pressure, and they responded very, very well, getting us well over 30 pieces. Yeah. I said this is something that uh, I've, I feel bad about because uh, last week I was complaining about all Andy's players scoring like three touchdowns on me. You playing them this week, all of his players scored like four touchdowns, and then you got Nate scoring five. I said, I mean, I'm just – Yeah, I mean, I actually have a decent amount of points I, this week. It's just uh, not quite enough to handle the plus sub 220 we got over on the other side. No, it was 280. Nate yeah, is <laughs> Yeah, I say, uh, I think there was a little bit of collusion going on with uh, Clay and uh, Clay and Andy. I don't know what's going on. Where is it? Yeah, he say, stole uh, my pick, guys. <laughs> he did, and then he traded him to you. He traded him right back to you. He probably um, could have got Braylon if he wouldn't have made the trade with me. <laughs> one hundred percent. One hundred percent. Uh, but uh, I want to also say an uh, honorable mention here, somebody that should be on this list but isn't, is Julian Julian Baker with uh, – I'm wanting to say he had 42, 
Yeah, I think he had 42 on. He was the 42 and a half on your bench there, Andy. Uh, but uh, switching gears, we'll go right over to wide receivers. Uh, we got a name that's since we, uh, you know, since we found out about this kid's name, he's been top wide receiver basically every week. Cody Swords, uh, you know, uh, tough loss out there uh, against a, a tough opponent, Portsmouth West, but comes out with 36.4 fantasy points. Uh, got Gage Cheadle, uh, another southeastern kid, getting 33.6. Uh, Piketon guy, Brent McGuire, 25.2. Carson Free, uh, 21.5. And then Blake Hoops, brother to brother connection, 20.1. A nice little round out there. Start with Hoops, end with Hoops. Uh, say th- the receivers here, other than Swords and uh, I want to say Cheadle, these uh, these other receivers just kind of, you never know who you're going to get in this top, this top receiver spot. And I just absolutely love it. Yeah, there's a lot of dogs, it seems like, this year uh, at the wide receiver spot. Plus, a lot of people more. I think the offenses are open. To the so. I said, Big yeah, shout to my guy, me. Cy Stu. He's not quite up there on the top five list, but he's always hovering right at, right around below it. He got a solid 15 uh, this week on my bench, but I always like to give him a shout out. To be honest with you, you know, it's tough to keep up with the lineups, especially with the draft. My apologies, Cy Stu. I'll get you in there this week. I'm going to say, I'm going to say he had a pretty nice little uh, – you said he had 15. I'm pretty sure, yeah. I want to say it was only off of two catches, but he made the most out of his, you know, his opportunities. He had, like, I want to say upwards of, like, 70, 80 yards. I mean, to be honest, though, against the Piketon defense, you got to kind of do that. And that's the whole reason Luke wasn't really in the top five this week is because he had some costly turnovers. Nothing against him. I mean, people are going to make mistakes, you know what I mean? But uh, I think, you know, when you lose that kind of four points, that's the difference between actually kind of getting up there and not because you still see Brent McGuire on here. And obviously, that's his uh, go to guy. So, yeah. yeah, I'll say, honestly, I just. The biggest reason I think uh, Cody is uh, always top is he's getting the most targets. Uh, him and Gage seem to be like the most targets. Whereas Brent, I feel like if he was, uh, if he didn't have so many other options on his team out there with him at wide out, not to take anything away from Waverly because they got a lot of options out there. Uh, but like, it's just I feel like, you know, if if Brent was maybe you know, by himself, he'd have a you know he'd be a little bit more towards the top. But I said there's a lot, there's a couple of guys that were. Bright, bright, I mean, bright dude, you look at guys like Silas team. Stewart. I, I don't mean to keep bringing him up. Zane Trace has so many weapons out there. That Aiden Dunn kid is an absolute weapon. Like, he's not necessarily, you know, a, even an honorable mention every week, but the dude is just getting kickoff returns. He's just making special, you know, Danny Amendola style plays and stuff like that. Like, and uh, I think that kind of hurts, you know, Sai Stu's fantasy value, but I think in all actuality, I think that's why Zane Trace is so good and i think the reason you know guys like uh like austin are the reason why you know silas can even have two catches for long ones it's the pike d man like anything you can get out of them is going to be great you know what i mean yeah absolutely absolutely yeah i say uh that's a we didn't have a whole lot of uh, a whole lot of defensive stats this week unfortunately we just couldn't we couldn't find a lot of them uh or there was just so much offense that uh, there just wasn't really a whole lot of them so we just uh we have, we have a top two defense we don't have a graphic for it it was just union was the top defense with 43 points i think that might be the most the defense has scored uh and then we got vinton county with 25 uh, everybody else was kind of uh, right around like nine seven i think there's a three negative two but, yeah, defense so. is legit. One hundred percent, one hundred percent. Yeah, I say. Uh, but coming up, we got uh, we got the next two weeks. We're gonna be playing the same opponents. Uh, we got it's kind of a two. It's a rivalry week. So we got week six. Uh, we're all playing uh, our rivals, and then uh, week seven, we're gonna be playing the rubber match to see who's gonna go into uh, you know the playoffs being two and one against their opponent, or uh, I guess against their rival. So, uh, Tony, you got Coach Carl. Uh, Andy, I'm glad you got uh, Clay instead of uh, me. And then me, I got Fleely. So, uh, you know, there's going to be a lot of trash talk between me and Trevor this week. Uh, looking forward to it. So, uh, what about you guys? Uh, I you hope guys it was take, you guys physically hurting him. <laughs> Yeah. Resort yeah. to physical so, violence. Do it. Beat him yeah, down. Uh, Strike was. him down. <laughs> Listen, I'm coming for Clay. 100%. This week, okay. After what happened last week, it's just getting me fired up. It's like, 
I'm really hoping I can get Clay this week. Yeah, well, I mean, my biggest thing is I'm I'm just hoping that I'm not going to be, you know, I'm hoping I've won enough already to where if I lose both these next back-to-back games against Fluely, I'm not going to be in the sixth spot playing Andy week one in the playoffs because I want to at least make it week two and I want to have a chance. And I feel like Andy's the only one I don't have a chance against to get there. Um, Look, see, when I look I'm trying to go 2 0 the next two weeks, man. I look to the left and I see a man that wants this thing. Okay. I look to the right and I see a man that's a dog. I see a man in front of me. I'm telling you right now, these dudes are ready to go. It took me a while to get my team together. Things have fallen into place. I'm, I'm telling you what, it's, it's not about the naysayers, my friends. It's not about the naysayers. We're coming and now is our time to shine. Everything we've done until now, even the loss that we just had against Andy will be will be redeemed you heard it listen I made this trade for Nate because I knew I told him I I made a tweet and said hey Nate welcome to Terrapin Station let's get this chip you know here's the deal buddy Nate Tate Gate I don't really care bud we're bringing the gate to hell to you brother it's going down here ain't nobody taking me out and then that's what we're gonna end it right there boys let's say uh tune in uh Check us out every every Monday now. Uh, ride the waiver wire every Wednesday, uh, and then game day shows on Friday. Uh, have a wonderful day. We'll see you guys when we see you guys.